interpreting IR scans for experiment 12, Friedel Crafts acylation. So we're reacting methoxybenzene with benzoyl chloride in the presence of aluminum chloride and producing a mixture of 2 methoxybenzophenone and 4 methoxybenzophenone. Now the methoxy group is an ether group which is electron donating and ring activating towards electrophilic aromatic substitution. It's also orthopara directing, which is why we get a mixture of the ortho and para products. So in general you must make assignments for the major characteristic absorption bands of the pure reagents, the pure products, and the recovered products. Step one, you want to look at the structure of the molecule to identify every kind of functional group that's in the molecule. Step two, you want to look at a generic scan of the same type of compound and study the shape and location of the IR absorption bands. Next, you want to go to the IR assignment table to get the IR assignment information that you will write on your scans. And finally, write all of these assignments down in the correct boxes on the IR scan please be sure to write the wave number that is listed in the table, not the actual value that's printed on the IR scan. Step 1. Let's identify the functional groups in our compounds. So anisole is methoxybenzene. It has a monosubstituted aromatic ring and a methyl ether group. Benzoyl chloride contains a monosubstitute aromatic ring and an aromatic acid chloride. 2-methoxybenzophenone uh, and 4-methoxybenzophenone contain a methyl ether, a monosubstitute aromatic ring, a disubstituted aromatic ring, and an aromatic ketone. So for a generic scan of an ether, I actually have methoxybenzene as the generic scan. So this will be exactly what you should see. Ethers have the same absorptions as alkanes, meaning that if they have methyl groups, that would look like an alkane methyl group. If it's an ethyl, it would look the same. But in addition, it's got, of course, the, the ether as well. Now, aryl alkyl ethers, like we have here, aryl alkyl, or diaryl, or vinyl ethers have two broad COC stretches in the region of 1200 to 1275, which you see here, and between 1220 and 1075. Now, these are in a congested region among uh, many other carbon to carbon absorptions, but they are broader than usual carbon to carbon stretches, so that does assist with identification of them. So here's the IR assignment table for ethers. Note that aromatic and vinyl ethers have an asymmetric COC stretch between 1200 and 1275 and a symmetric COC stretch between 1020 and 1075 wave numbers. And here is the scan of methoxybenzene that you can identify these COC stretches as well as the other fingerprints uh, indicative of uh, a monosubstituted aromatic ring. Let's look next at an acid chloride. So I have here the generic scan, or if you will, the scan of acetyl chloride. Now this is an aliphatic acid chloride, so it'll be a little bit different than our aromatic acid chloride, which is benzoyl chloride. So most notable uh, is the carbonyl stretch at 1810 in the case of an aliphatic acid chloride. When this is conjugated with an aromatic ring or a vinyl group, it's lowered. In fact, you'll see it typically at about 1770 wave numbers down about here for an aromatic acid chloride. The acid chloride also has a C to CO stretch somewhere in the region of 1000 to 1300 and a carbon to chlorine stretch somewhere in the region of 730 to 550 wave numbers. And here is the assignment table for acid chlorides. Uh, among the various types of acid chlorides we want to look at the aromatic 
acid chloride. Again, a carbonyl stretch at 1770 wave numbers. Then there's the um, C to CO stretch, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,300 wave numbers, and a C to CL stretch between 730 and 550 wave numbers. And here then is the scan of uh, benzoyl chloride and I'm thinking you should not have too much difficulty finding the carbonyl stretch. There's some splitting going on here, but nonetheless, nothing else uh, like a carbonyl absorbs in this region. Let's look next at the uh, products, the, the aromatic ethers. Now, an IR scan of a generic ether was discussed on slide number four, so we won't discuss this aspect of the compound here. Likewise, an IR scan of a generic ketone has already been discussed in experiment 9 when we did the hydration of an alkyne. And it's page 109 in the notes, so I'll let you look that up. The IR assignment table for ethers was discussed on slide number 5. Again, so here's our ether group. And the IR assignment table for ketones was discussed again in experiment 9, hydration of an alkyne. So here is the IR scan of 4 methoxy benzophenone. So it's paradise substituted. 830 wave numbers is the absorption for the uh, outer plane bend for a, a para to substitute aromatic, typically about here. Uh, 690 and 770 are the two absorption bands for a mono substituted aromatic ring. Looks like we have one extra in here. Now the stockroom does not have any pure 2-methoxybenzophenone product. So you'll have four IR scans to interpret for this lab. You'll have the pure anisole reagent, pure benzoyl chloride reagent, and then 4-methoxybenzophenone pure, and then of course your recovered product. Now your recovered product should contain both ortho and paramethoxybenzophenone, so it will be very busy in the middle and low frequency regions. Look for evidence of unreacted anisole and benzoyl chloride in your recovered product as well. And the TLC may show evidence of two products and perhaps unreacted reagents. Thanks for watching.